All right. Hello, everyone. Yes, I do apologize for the late start. Um, well, 15, so about nine minutes late. I apologize for that. Sincerely. Um, things have not gone as smoothly this morning as I was hoping that they would. Um, um, my son's mom was late picking him up. Um, Jesse had to go to a walk-in clinic um, for her cough. She's okay, don't get me wrong, but it's... So that just left me having to get the, you know, breakfast ready and um, all of that kind of stuff. And then uh, for all the kids and myself and, and um, you know, not that it would have been all on her, but in, instead of doing that, I would have been able to be getting ready for all of this. And Aiden's mom was supposed to pick him up at 10, but she didn't get here until about 10 after. Um, I scheduled it. I was originally going to schedule this for 10 o'clock. Uh, but when everything started hitting the fan this morning, I was like, ah, maybe 10.15. I, and, and I was toying between 10.15 and 10.30. If I'd have been, if I'd have just scheduled it for 10.30, everything would have been fine. <laughs> but um, trying to stick to as close as what I said the other day, because uh, I said I was going to start at 10. Um, I decided to go with 10.15, and that was what threw us off today. So I appreciate uh, your patience, and uh, I will not take advantage of it um, if it is within me to not do so. Um, uh, we got to dock you. Yep, you go ahead. You go ahead and dock my check, my paycheck, Bushman. You, that's that's absolutely uh, well, fine and well. Um, uh, yeah, Jesse has had to go into work as well. After she after she left her um, <laughs> her em kind of emergency appointment at the walk in, uh, she got called into work because things. I'm not going to say anything because that got me into trouble last time I said it. But <laughs> uh, things are things. That's just the way it is. Uh, stuck at work for a few hours with bronchitis. She says. Um, yeah, so she also got tested for whooping cough and, uh, uh, she has to wait 24 hours for that to come back. So we'll see. I don't think it's whooping cough, but I'm also not a doctor. So we'll see. Bronchitis is not a surprise. Uh, she's been coughing pretty, pretty severely at times. And yes, she is a rock star. She absolutely is. Um, I, part of... Part of my, I'm going to get myself in trouble again. Part of my, part of my difficulty is that her staff do not appreciate her the way that they should appreciate her. And they don't treat her nearly as well as they should. I hope some of them are watching. I know none of them are, but maybe, maybe somebody will catch this. But um, uh, they, 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 not her boss. Her boss loves her. And her boss understands what's going on, but hers, not even all of her staff, but many of her staff who were there before her, who think they know better and all this other kind of stuff, they treat her like trash. And um, as her husband, that pisses me off. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, that's just kind of a natural thing for me. Um, if you are, um, yeah. So... That's that. <laughs> I'm surprised you are so candid about her work on these live videos. Well, look, um, I don't have anything to hide from anybody. I, I honestly don't. And I, I sincerely do. Now, what I won't do is I will not go to her job and make a scene. I won't do that. But this is my video. And I'm, uh, I will express my opinions on this video. <laughs> Um, and if they're watching, so be it. I have nothing to hide from them uh, at all. Um, um, nothing I'm saying here is, is falsity. It's all truth. So it's just the way it is. Um, um, I'll talk to them. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> um, I, uh, 
there is something to be said with, you know, professionalism and um, letting her handle her job. Um, we do talk about it quite candidly, so maybe that's why I feel I can be very candid on my videos here. But um, it is what it is, man. You know, we, we do not have, you know, we don't have a bad, don't get me wrong. We live a very blessed life. We love each other very dearly. Um, we love our kids. Our kids love us. And um, we have a roof over our heads. We have soft beds to sleep on. We have, uh, you know, very nice things. So I'm not saying that we have it bad or, or anything like that. We have it very good. But those little things in life can can wear upon you. Um, especially when it, it feels like. And again, feels are not else, not always, um, uh, not always reality. But it feels like there's uh, under uh, underappreciation that's there and a lack of uh, sincerity. But hey, let's move on. Let's move on. Um, la da 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 da. But yes, Jesse is definitely a rock star. All right. Well, we're here for it belongs in a museum. Uh, to which you should candidly respond, so do you, because that's the line from the movie that I got this from. Uh, and what we do on this, this is episode three. I've done uh, two other episodes of this. Uh, I've looked at four games so far. So that's all we do here is we just simply take a little bit of time, look at a couple of games that are on my shelves and uh, that are older, not super old or not like from the era of antiquity or anything like that. It's just, you know, we take, a, we take a look at a couple of games that have been on my shelf for a long time and we explain why. And this, I like this, I like this series. And the reason I like this series is because uh, it was Jesse's idea, first of all. And then second of all, it gives me a look at games that I haven't played for a long time. And it, there's just something about taking a game, opening it up, and looking at the pieces and you're reminded of all the fun that you've had with the game in the past or you're reminded that hey i need to get this back to the table to see if i want to keep it still and that's inevitably where a a um a uh a series like this will lead it will either lead to a confidence in why i still have the game in my collection or it will remind me of the need for a calling that's that's uh, probably soon to be coming <laughs> oh sorry i don't man i've got the hiccups anyway uh speaking of calling there is a cool thing that happened yesterday it was the last day that it could have happened before the late pledge happens at least and that is i backed the new thunder road vendetta um Oh, I can't even remember. Uh, golly, I'm so stupid. I backed something. I can't even remember the name. Um, uh, let's see. Thunder Road. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Um, board game. Uh, let's see. Come on, come on, come on. Carnival of Chaos. I knew Chaos was in there, so, uh, but I was thinking Chaos Cove, and I was like, no, that's the new Martin Wallace game that's coming out. But uh, Carnival of Chaos. I backed uh, Carnival of Chaos yesterday, and I did something a little bit... Um, I used the business credit card because it's a business expense. I don't normally do that. We try to we try to keep... Uh, we try to not use credit unless we need to to kind of build credit for something else, which is something that we're needing to do right now. Uh, but... Uh, so I went ahead and got the uh, Maximum Chrome package. I went ahead and went kind of all in with it where uh, it's T Tina's, Tina's Dynamite Deal of the Day. So you get the Maximum Chrome box, the Metal Scrap Tokens, the Box Extender, uh, Carnival Chaos, the new expansion. And I also went in to get the, um, oh, what's the uh, add-on that was in there? The, 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 um, the uh, folded space insert. I went and got the uh, folded space insert as well because I think that's going to be a cool thing with the box extender and all that good stuff. So it was, it was a pretty penny, that's for sure. But um, I'm looking forward to it. Now, what that's going to do 
is I have a base copy that Restoration Games sent me as a review copy. I'm going to review that here pretty soon to fulfill that kind of unwritten contract. And um, I'm going to use that as a review copy. And then, since I have this guy coming on the way, which is everything that Thunder Road has, uh, I'm going to give away my base game of uh, Thunder Road. So we'll, we'll do that soon. Not now. Not starting it now. But we'll do that soon. As soon as I get the review copy done, we'll probably announce it at the end of the live review that we do uh, so that um, everybody can kind of get on that. We'll do some kind of game for it, some type of giveaway, and uh, we'll have you uh, email me with some kind of strange off-the-wall uh, question or comment or ideas or what have you, you know, whatever it might be, but we're going to do that. So that's something that's... Uh, you know, just the, the idea of a coal is coming, and that's going to be part of it. But um, we are going to do that. But if, it, if it's in a museum, you cannot play with it. Well, just because it's not in a museum doesn't mean it doesn't belong in a museum. See what I mean? See what I did there? It belongs in a museum. That doesn't mean it is in a museum. So I'm not putting any of these in a museum. Uh, they are just... Um, that's just speaking to the, uh, the old-ish nature of these games. We're not talking about brand spanking new games. Uh, Go For It Painting is here. Hello, hello. Good to see you. Uh, let's see. David Brownlee is here. Hello, good to see you. Uh, Bushman is here already interacted with you. Tom is here as well. Hello, Tom. Thank you for being here, buddy. Uh, great gig to punch in our cardboard tokens to make a a ASMR videos. Should be called Sleeving with Sam. That's what I'm doing while I listen. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, let's see here. Um, anybody else? Ride with Honor is here. Good to see you. Thank you for being here. Derek is here. Yo, yo. Uh, received my copy of Let's Go to Japan yesterday. Looking forward to getting it to the table. Ah, we got our copy of Stone Spine Architects from Thunderworks Games in, along with a plushie, a Minotaur plushie. So uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, I asked Jess if she wanted me to get the plushie, and she said yes. I sent a picture to JT, and he was instantly, and I mean instantly, jealous of my uh, plushie. Uh, he was so jealous, he asked me if I got it from the dollar store. Um, so I'm pretty sure he wasn't jealous about it. But I, I did accuse him of being jealous, which is the same thing. Um, so that's pretty cool. We got that in. Uh, also got a box of games from the Dice Tower that I'm going to be using to uh, kind of bolster my reviews over there. Still only going to be doing one review a week, but uh, that's pretty much it. We got uh, Fighters of the Pacific. Invasion, Free State, I got uh, V-Sabotage and the Miniature Pack from V-Sabotage. And then I got a couple of expansions for Barrage, which I need to go get the base game now. I don't have the base game, so we'll see how that works out. And then got a few other, I got Mino Dice, um, uh, one that's called Seventh Seas, I see, I think, or something like that. I can't remember. It's uh, it's from Board and Dice, a little card game uh, that's from Board and Dice. So I'm looking forward to uh, getting those to the table as well. So you know, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, love my new Minotaur plushie, Jesse says. Uh, let's see here. I play with stuff in <laughs> I play with stuff in museums all the time and get kicked out repeatedly. Uh, would you define these game choices as older games that are also very good games? You recommend? Yes. If it's in my collection still, um, that is in an, in and of itself a recommendation because um, well, I will say that the, I do have a lot of games that I'm probably going to be getting rid of, but I think the ones that I I will pull down and talk about have a high likelihood of staying in my collection, but it's possible that for some reason, some way, shape, or form, they will be uh, ushered out for, for a fringe reason that, that might be, just because I need to make space. Um, uh, I'm not as, I'm not as uh, strict with the space as I really should be in here, 
um, because there are a lot of games all over the place. Um, but with that having been said, um, I, I, if, if it's in my collection, I think that is a recommendation. Personally, that doesn't mean that you'll find it a good game. That just means that I find it that it's a good game. And if your tastes align with mine, well, then you can put two and two together. Um, so there's that. Let's see here. Uh, Joker ES says, narrowly avoided getting the plushie by not showing the option to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, David Brownlee, shout out to AEG, who delivered their Kickstarter a month and a half earlier than estimated uh, than their estimated delivery date. Ah, oh, that's pretty cool. Um, I know that, um, um, whatchamacallit, um, Game Toppers. Game Toppers is delivering their stuff, uh, I believe, as we speak. They, uh, if, if all has gone to plan, uh, he's probably almost done. Uh, with his, which is, again, a couple of months early. So that is a good thing, that is, and that is definitely worthy of praise. So uh, great job to AEG for doing that. Uh, I've got a, I've got a good friend of mine that I used to work with that uh, works for AEG now, so um, I'm glad that they are experiencing some good success because she's probably part of that equation. All right, um, well, let's see here. There are a couple... Of different games and this is how down to the wire I was this morning I've only actually pulled one of the games that I decided to talk about today the other one I'm going to go ahead and pull down right now and it is uh, we'll actually maybe go with that first now you'll notice that maybe you won't because I'm kind of off screen but I am wiping dust off of this we do have dust in this house and dusting is kind of a normal thing of life but uh, Anyway, we'll go ahead and go with this one first, and that is 10 Days in Asia. Now, this is part of the 10 Days in series. Uh, they had 10 days in the USA. They had 10 days in Europe, 10 days in Africa, and 10 days in Asia. I don't know that there are any other ones other than that, but um, this is probably one of the ones that... Um, this might be leaning towards hitting the coal box because I don't know that I'll ever play this one again. I really enjoyed this game in the past, but I don't know if it has staying power, so I need to get it to the table to see how other people in my circles like it. Um, but uh, it is by uh, Alan Moon and Aaron Weisblum. Um, and... Uh, has a lot of, you know, Mensa Select, Major Fun Award, Dr. Toy uh, winner, Smart Play, Smart Toy. Um, Parenting for High Potential recommended game, National Association of Gifted Children, uh, the National Parenting Center, Seal of Approval. So it's got a lot of accolades, if we can put it that way. Um, so there is that. Uh, can't wait to get and try out the Cubitos expansion and some more Tiny Towns content. That's cool. Uh, David Brownlee, I have about 40 games to offload, but the local store I was going to sell them to is currently on a buying freeze. What experience getting rid of games can you share? Uh, honestly, David, um, uh, JT would be the better person to ask. He, he regularly calls and sells his games, and I don't know exactly where he does <clears throat> do that, but um, I know that BGG has a pretty prolific marketplace uh, at which you can, or within which you can sell your games. Um, I don't know about anything else because I, I really haven't been in that situation. Usually I just give the games away. We'll, we'll do something here on the channel as a giveaway. And, you know, depending, we've never done this, but as shipping costs stay kind of expensive at this point, we might ask for, you know, small, uh, you know, charge for shipping and that kind of thing. But, but the, the games themselves, we usually don't try to, uh, I mean, I guess we could, we definitely could, but we don't try to make any money off of it. We just want to try to get rid of them. And so we do giveaways. Um, uh, so I, I really can't help you with that much at all. Uh, but yeah, BGG does have that uh, marketplace that you can uh, look into. All right, 
So we're going to go ahead and uh, take a look at 10 Days in Asia here. This is from Out of the Box uh, Publishing, uh, Out of the Box Games. Um, GameWire Review says that it is a fantastic game. The combination of enjoyable gameplay and quality components is hard to beat. It's for two to four players, ages 10 to adult. Um, and as far as the time is concerned, I don't know that they have the time anywhere here on the box. It is not a long game. We're talking like uh, 20, 30 minutes. There you go. 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, so there you have it. And that gives you a, a, an idea of what the game looks like as far as that's concerned. Um, so, never heard of this series. Interesting. Um, well, it is, uh, out of the box publishing is, I don't believe they're around anymore. It's an older company, and I don't think that uh, you, can, you, can, you can find them in operation anymore. But as you can see, the rule book is super, <laughs> super simple. It's not difficult at all. Um, I've given Lost Cities a, uh, uh, the moniker of being glorified Racco. And really, this one isn't that much different. Um, but it just doesn't have that uh, kind of snooty feel to it that, that Lost Cities always had. Uh, but uh, basically, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be drawing a, a, a hand of 10 tiles. And they're kind of like cards. I'll show you them in a minute. And you're going to start this. And basically the idea here is that you're going to try to get yours in order using different kinds of transportation cards. You can walk, you can fly, you can use a railroad, you can use uh, ships across the ocean, but you're trying to get yours in order from day one to day 10 to where it is a viable um, uh, construct throughout the entire thing. So, uh, there is going to be a draw pile and a discard pile. So on your turn, basically, you're going to uh, draw a card and then you're going to use that card to maybe replace a spot here uh, in your um, uh, journey, or you're going to discard it. You can discard it on top of any one of the three uh, discard piles. When you draw a card, you can also uh, take one of the uh, face uh, one of the top tiles or cards from the discard piles as well. So you're just trying to be the first person to complete your 10-day journey before everybody else does. That's that's the long and the short of it. Um, so in doing that, wow, look at that mess. Um, so in doing that, you have this um, map, okay, uh, that is the board. And basically, you're not moving things on the map. This is just a reference point for all of the players to see how you can get from one place to another. So you can always walk from one country to an adjacent country. So if I have a card that says India, I can walk to Nepal, I can walk to China, I can walk to Pakistan, uh, I can walk to uh, Bhutan, I can walk to Bangladesh, um, I can even walk to Sri Lanka if I wanted to. It's just considered that, uh, you know, if it's adjacent. And that's what this little line uh, delineates, I believe, is that you can walk to Sri Lanka even though it's an island. You can still walk over a bridge or what have you. Uh, the thing that I liked about 10 Days in Asia is that they had these railroads. So if you wanted to, you could take a railroad from Russia, since it's here, to Laos. Okay. Or you could take uh, from Russia to North Korea, even though you can walk across here. If you had a railroad right after Russia and then you had North Korea, it would work because you can take the railroad to North Korea that way. Um, so that's a cool thing that it did. But it also brought into uh, Pacific Ocean and Indian Ocean uh, ship tiles that you could use. Uh, so if you're up here in Japan, you could use a Pacific Ocean card to go to Malaysia uh, or Indonesia. You could do that. Um, but then, of course, if you're out here, you would also have to have another Pacific Ocean card to get back somewhere else. Or if it's bordering on the Indian Ocean, like if I say I'm going to go from Japan by the Pacific Ocean to Malaysia, I could then go by the Indian Ocean to India from Malaysia, since it's on both sides. And here's the line that kind of demarks the uh, boundaries there. So it's just a really interesting thing here. Um, uh, and I think that's a pretty neat thing. 
Uh, you even have some uh, a little smaller pullout here that talks about the uh, Mediterranean Ocean over here or the Mediterranean area. So that's pretty cool where you can you can go from Turkey to Cyprus and some from Cyprus to, to Lebanon and from Lebanon to Israel and so forth. So you get that. Um, but that's the general uh, gist of the game. We'll leave that out just so you can uh, take a look at it. Uh, all of the different um, players will have their own set of uh, card holders, basically. So these card holders go in, and that's day one all the way to day 10. And these cards are basically just going to uh, sit inside these spaces just like this. And uh, I have no idea if this is coming out in any way, shape, or form. But you will be uh, having these. You know, you'll draw at random ten cards that go into your your journey track here. And now, what you basically have to do is you have to one at a time uh, get these to match up uh, in, in a valid progression journey. Um, and so the first person to do that is the winner. It's a really simple game. And, um, I really need to get it back to the table to see how it holds up because I really have enjoyed this game in the past. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see how it's going to hold up because, it is, as Derek was saying earlier, never even heard of this series. It is an older series, and it is one of those series that, um, you know, it, it's, it's been a while. Um, how, did, how does this go like that? And this, yep, there we go. But you kind of get the idea, right? Um, I think it's a neat game, and it's definitely got that geographical quality to it of... Um, because if you ask, I mean, you can go on the internet and you can find those videos of, of college students, for crying out loud, being asked geography questions and none of them have a clue. Again, I know that those are kind of cherry picked and editing goes into a, into a lot of those videos. So I'm not trying to be too hard on our college students, but my goodness, um, uh, ge geography is lacking. Uh, e even, I mean... Even even our kids, who I think are pretty good at geography, they still have problems sometimes. So games like this that will basically teach you geography without you realizing that, it, that it's teaching you geography, I like games that do that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Novel Knight was on my list already, but haven't sold through them yet. Uh, Maybe how to cold games will be a future video. Uh, cheaper component quality. Um, uh, just bought from them. I'd be interested in your list. I've, I've just restarted my collection from Fire Loss. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. Uh, not my eyeball games. We played Let's Go to Japan Deluxe. It was a strange game, but the theme does come through. Yeah, that board looks 70s-ish. It's definitely not high component quality. Um, the, the card holders are good. Don't get me wrong. The board is super bland. It just looks like a political, uh, political map, um, with just the political boundaries. No, you know, it, it, I guess they could have done it with a topographical map and still uted, use, utilized the different shades of the different colors for it. I don't know how that would have looked graphically speaking though. It might've been too busy. Um, because there is important information here, and for the for the most part, the map is just a reference sheet. It is not anything else. So yeah, this is not a game that I bought based on aesthetic appeal. <laughs> not even close. Um, but the uh, component quality for for what it for when it was made was very good, um, especially for such a simple game. Um, and I do enjoy the game, don't get me wrong. I just don't know if it's got the staying power anymore. Uh, because a lot of the, you know, I, I kept games like this around because they were very easy to play with my younger kids. Kids are getting older, they're teenagers now. And this is a, you know, this might be too simple for them. Um, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, let's see here. 
I don't even recall Dice Tower talking about the 10-day series. Wow, I know that we did that. Uh, not that I've watched every Dice Tower video, though. No, I get that. But it was it was a while ago. Don't get me wrong. Um, 10 days in series. Let's see. Uh, maybe it's on the uh, box here. 2006, 2007 uh, is, is where this game comes from. So we're going on 18, 18 years old. So uh, it's pretty pretty old for board games, kind of. Uh, maybe Tom included that series in his video recommending educational games. Maybe. This is a really old series. So a lot of the things that the Dice Tower do, they are they try to stay very current, contemporary. This is not contemporary. This is an old game by today's standards. So keep uh, take that for a grain of salt. Take that with a grain of salt, rather. Uh, David Brownlee, I've been to Japan eight times, so the activity cards are nostalgic and the trip planning theme sings to me. I've been to Japan a couple of times as well. Uh, when I was living in Korea, we had to do, um, we had to do, um, um, oh, I can't remember what they're called now. Um, the things that allow you to work. Visa. Visa runs. Work visa runs. And basically what you're... What the um, what your manager in charge of you would do is he would he would basically book you on a flight in the morning to Japan. Um, I went to Osaka a couple of times, and uh, he would book you on a flight to Japan. You you it was an early flight. You had to get to Osaka, get to the uh, Korean um, consulate, do your paperwork hang around for a couple of hours, uh, pick up your paperwork, and then get back to, the, uh, get back to the, the airport in time to catch your evening flight back to Korea. So it was a day affair. We, we called them visa runs. But um, the, the Hogwans, the language institutes, were the ones that were usually having to do that. Uh, I also worked for a school that took care of all that uh, stuff for you, a uh, Western-style school that... The, the office staff took care of all of our visas for us, renewed them, and all that kind of thing. We didn't have to leave the country. Uh, but with uh, language institutes, we did. I don't know why there was a difference, but it could have been the difference between one province and, the, and another and the differences in that situation, but not really sure. But uh, one time I got stuck because uh, the consulate was, was like at the last minute, got my stuff back to us, and then... I didn't catch the train that I needed to catch to get back to make my flight, um, and I missed my flight. And uh, luckily, the uh, the language institute's owner knew the president of an airline that was uh, their their main hub was there in Osaka. So he contacted him. They put me up in a hotel overnight, and then I was able to catch a flight the next morning. It was a it was a hairball, but it worked out eventually. Um, all right, so that is uh, 10 Days in Asia. Go check it out. I don't know if you can find it anymore. I, I honestly don't, but uh, it's one that um, is good for an educational, geographical um, setting. So uh, check that out. Then another one that I've talked a lot about, um, and one of the reasons why I wanted to do it is because we were just talking about Catan and some of the journeys uh, some of the uh, versions of Catan that have come out that are uh, kind of sp kind of spread its wings a little bit, and um, uh, they they've used the core system of mechanisms in in other games that were historically based. This one is geographically based, so that's another reason why I pulled these two out. Two geographically designed games, uh, and that is Catan Geographies Germany. Uh, Catan Geographies Germany, and uh, this is one, this is the only uh, kind of uh, version of Catan that I own, and uh, it has some pretty stinking cool uh, artwork, not artwork, but graphic design. So as you can see here on the back, um, this is what the board looks like. And you have all of these different uh, monuments and, and national landmarks that you can build 
um, uh, around uh, the German countryside. And, and the cool thing about this map is that each of the regions that produce the different resources in the game uh, are historically uh, geographical regions that produce that kind of resource uh, historically. And that's one of the other things that I really liked about the game um, is that it was connected in that way um, to history. It wasn't just, hey, we're going to make a board, and yeah, we're, you're going to produce wheat down here, and you're going to produce wood here. And there's no reason for it. It's just that, you know, that, that, that's how it worked out to be balanced, me you know, mechanically. No, they actually designed the board based on how, on what resources those regions of Germany produced, um, historically speaking, what they were known for. So this is just a, a, a cool version of Catan that I've always kind of enjoyed and is came around today. Yes, geography lesson today, exactly. Sam, you aren't going to call that, are you? No, no, I'm not going to call this. This is one of the games that uh, I uh, will not be getting rid of. I really, 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 really love this game. This is not going to be called. Uh, so yeah, this is kind of, you know, that just to kind of uh, showcase the, 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 the differences there, 10 Days in Asia could be on the chopping block. Uh, Catan Geographies Germany will not be on the chopping block. So as you can see here, this is the uh, game overview, um, the game rules, and boom, <laughs> that's it. So we're not talking about a whole lot of differences in the rules. There are some differences because each of these different landmarks can be built uh, at specific junctures uh, in the board, and that's really cool. But here's the board, and uh, we're actually gonna uh, open this up. Um, the back side of the board is pretty cool looking. As you can see there, it just has a really nice uh, kind of recessed or monochromatic uh, picture of, of all of those different things. Uh, it does have a big board, so uh, keep that in mind as well. I'll, I'll do what I can here to try to give you the best look as we go through, but um, here's the bottom of the board. And then as you go up, first of all, this looks much better in my opinion than a Catan board. Uh, that was one of the first things that, that turned me on to the game was that it is an aesthetically pleasing Catan board. You don't have to piece it together either. That's another thing that I really, really kind of always hated about Catan is that it was that uh, modular board and the modular boards just didn't stay well together and just bugged me. Um, so the one thing that this maybe has against it is that... Um, uh, these spots are fixed. You know, these are not randomized. This will always be a nine. This will always be a four. This will always be an 11. There's no changes. But here are the different places where you can build some of these different uh, landmarks that Germany is known for. Um, and they kind of set out here. What do you need to, to build? Well, for to build the Lubeck, you need to spend a wood and a wheat. Um, there's a space for a longest road up here. What do you need to uh, build Braun uh, Braunschweig? Uh, you need to use one of your roads. Um, so you, you kind of get the idea. This is not, um, this is not a, a large departure from Catan. It just has a little bit of sprinkling on that to make it not just Catan, but Germany. So um, I really like, I really like this game. You are correct. I'm not going to be getting rid of this one. But um, here is another reason that I like the game so much. It comes with this almanac that is that tells you all about uh, Germany and the different things that are in the game, all of the different uh, landmarks that are in the game. It has all of that information in there. Uh, the regions that uh, you know, what about wheat production in Germany? You know, that kind of stuff. Um, uh, clay, you know, producing clay and all of that kind of thing. I love the fact that this is in here. I have read through this entire thing. I probably could stand to read through it again. But now, uh, these cards are like totally out of whack and so is everything else down there. So I apologize for that. 
but uh, the card, the component quality for the cards is is about what it would what you would expect it to be. Um, but there's that, and it comes in these little trays. That's cool as well. Not totally different from a leather from other Catan things, but this is one of the reasons why I've liked this game so much, is because these pieces are super cool, and like I've been there, Porta Negra. Um, I've been there. I've been to some of these places, not all of them, but I've been to some of them. Um, I don't know if that's showing, but anyway, you can kind of get the idea. All of these pieces um, are super nice uh, as far as that's concerned. Wow, there's cards everywhere. Oh, oh, I'm just knocking everything over. But and just having these these alone here's the here's the robber token uh as well so the component quality of this game is really high that's one of the things that i really enjoyed about it and not just those monument pieces those long uh landscape pieces it's also the player pieces you know you're not talking about just wooden houses and everything like that you've got these well these are dark you might not be able to see them very well let me go ahead and uh, use the orange ones might be best. But each of the roads, like this is what a house looks like. Aren't those cool? These are awesome houses. But you get the idea, right? Those are what the houses look like. Not the little blocks. And then the roads look like this. And they're all plastic. And again, I understand there's nothing wrong with wooden components, but these plastic miniatures are super cool. So hopefully you can get a good look at that. These are really, really nice components. And think about this. This game was made um, when? I'm going <laughs> to... Close your eyes for a minute. <laughs> uh, let's see, where is it? 2008? This is from 2008, y'all. And the, these are really nice components. You know what I mean? I mean, there's a lot of detail on these things. I know mean, you can't really see them very well, but super, super, super good quality. And that's one of the things that really kind of, this compared to like regular Catan was like, why would you play regular Catan? That looks like it was made in somebody's basement. This actually looks like a produced game. And I really enjoy it. I really enjoy it. Now, at the end of the day, it is just Catan. Which isn't a bad thing, but I don't want to, you know, uh, talk it up so much that you think this is a completely better game than Catan. It really isn't. It's kind of just regular Catan with a couple of things added onto it that makes it slightly different, but not completely different. Um, but component quality is super high for this game. And uh, that in and of itself is quite enough for me. Another thing that I don't know if you can tell, but there is a space for each of these, uh, there is a space for each of these in here, but <laughs> the problem is remembering where all of them go. Like that one, I'm pretty sure goes right there. This one, I don't, uh, maybe right there. Yeah, maybe. Uh, this one looks like it's probably in there somewhere. Um, so there is a little bit of uh, difficulty this way in that we have to try to find out that goes in there, I think. Uh, this one will go here. Um, this one, I have no... Oh, goes right there, it looks like. Uh, this one, probably there. Uh, yeah, that one goes there. Um, oh, 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 this one goes there. Yep. That's the Porta Negra. And then I'm pretty sure this one goes here. And then this one goes here. Pretty sure. So, oh. Um, but anyway, 
You've got two robbers. Why are there two robbers? I don't know why there are two robbers. Anyway, you kind of can see where each space, each of those monuments has its own little spot. And technically it's supposed to hold it, but as you can see, as you can tell when, when I opened it up, you can tell that it was definitely not um, all nice and tidy in there. But that is Catan Geographies Germany. This one will not be leaving my collection. Um, I, I enjoy it. And even just looking through it, I want to play it again, which says a lot about it from the standpoint of um, Catan is an older game and it has really stood the test of time. This, I believe, is one of the better versions of it. So that is that. Uh, let's see what we've got here. Nice. Uh, let's see. Geography lesson today. Yes, Tom, of course. Uh, Sam, you aren't going to call that one. No, I'm not. Quite a unique version of Catan. Yes, it is. And that's one of the reasons why I'm not going to get, it, get, get rid of it. Does it appeal to you because you lived in Germany? Yes, it does. There is that connection for me. Um, um, uh, like I said, I, I've been to, to a lot of those monuments. Not all of them, uh, but I've been to a lot of them. So there's that there's that um, anecdotal connection, I guess, uh, would be a better way to put it. Uh, yes, it looks better. Absolutely does look better. Nice. Uh, is it a negative that you cannot switch the numbers on those areas? I don't think it is. Um, if you want variation, then of course you're going to think it is. But I don't think it is because of the historical nature. You're, those spots were, were those resources historically produced were where those resources were historically produced. Now, could you change the numbers and make those numbers a variation? Yeah, you absolutely could have. And so I can see where some people might think that that's a, down, a downgrade. Um, but I don't view it that way uh, at all. Answered my question. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, too bad this Catan version is so hard to find in Portugal, but in Portugal we can find the Iberian Peninsula map. Oh, Oh, that's cool. I'd be interested to play that one, um, just because I, I like those those kinds of things. If it's if it's made in the same vein as this one was, where it, it it's it's largely where things were were known to produce, um, I think that would be a cool thing. Uh, have you heard of the Catan das Busch, the book? Um, it is an expansion for Catan of fan-created modules that you can add to Catan. Super awesome. Oh, wow. No, I haven't heard of that. That's an interesting thing. I mean, not... <laughs> Holy crap, that's old. <laughs> oh, that's funny, Brian. Good to see you, buddy. Um, it adds various fan-made scenarios. Catan still holds and does belong in a museum. It does belong in a museum, but it is still, I think... Uh, relevant, um, which is a cool thing. If it if it is in a museum, uh, but it's still irrelevant, because that's usually what it does. If it's in a museum, that's, that means it's no longer relevant. It's historical, and it's valuable, historically speaking, but it's not relevant in a contemporary format. But I think Catan still is relevant. It's not one of my favorite games, but I do think that people are still playing it, so uh, I think it, it is still uh, a good thing. Uh, well, it is the same year as Stone Age. <laughs> hmm. Maybe that's what we'll pull out next week, Stone Age. But, um, yeah. Let's see here. Um... All right, well, um, don't really have a whole lot else that we're going to be doing here. I'll put that right there, and I'll grab 10 days in Asia. So those are the... Wow, they're both geography games, and they're both, like, super dominant red games with, like, black and yellow. What in the world? Black and gold, whatever. I hate the dive mechanic. In Catan. Stone Age is classic, Derek says. All right, educate me, Brian. What is the dive mechanic? I don't understand what dive means. 
Is that one of the ones that's based around the water where you have to dive into the water? What, what is that? I don't understand what that's called. I, I don't know the names of these different mechanisms. Okay, so what's the dive mechanism? What is that? You'll have to educate me here. <clears throat> ah, dice. Now let's vote. Which of those two games are more appealing? That one. <clears throat> Visually appealing, definitely that one. If you're looking for education, that one. If you're looking for geography, probably that one. Um, if you're looking for German geography, that one. <laughs> Stupid autocorrect. Oh, okay, I got you. Uh, how you generate resources. Yeah, I can, I can see that. I can see that. That's one of the things that I've, I've really kind of... Um, I really had the hardest time um, grappling with with Catan is is that resource production because um, you could just you know you can you can stick to well these numbers are going to be rolled more often than all of the other numbers on either other end and all of that kind of stuff so you're fighting around those but then somebody just keeps rolling box cars somebody just keeps rolling snake eyes and you know it's that kind of stuff it's just it works out over time, but each individual game, it can be pretty, pretty frustrating as far as when those resources are rolled. So I totally understand that, uh, Brian. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's vote which more appealing. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about all that. All right. Well, that's about it. We've been here for well, we haven't really been here for an hour, have we? Because I started late. So I'm going to hang around. I, I do, I do want to keep it to about an hour uh, for each of these. And that is bugging the heck out of me. I got this on backwards. And I'm going to see just how much... Yep, everything has just gone to crud in there. So let's just keep that. And so now... Yep. Okay. Well, what... Why am I having such a hard time with this? Okay, there we go. Box fart. All right, there we go. Now everything is right with the world. But this one's correct as well. Which one would you say Jesse would want to play? Um, I think Jesse will enjoy this game a lot. I think she will, uh, which will be one of the reasons I keep the game if she does really enjoy it. Um... I think she will also like this one as well. I don't think she's ever played Catan. So I think that's um, another reason to kind of break this out and, and, and see if she enjoys it. I don't know that she's ever played Catan. Uh, uh, that's why I like Castles of Burgundy. You roll the dice first, then decide how best to use them. Koss is here, you late person, you. And you know it wasn't the box that farted. It was Koss. And I will not be shy and letting you know if I did indeed break wind. But that was definitely the box. It was too, it was too, um, <laughs> I'm not going to go there. But I do want to say something. Uh, I'm not going to say it, though. Um, but, uh, yeah. Uh, couldn't tell you why die rolling bothers me in some games and others. Um, well, it depends on what you're rolling for. Um if you're rolling dice to produce resources that are going to be the only way that you can do th other things in the game and the dice continually screw you but on, on that production, that's going to be more annoying to me at least than if I'm rolling dice to say ascribe hits in combat because you know it's like well my regions didn't produce any resources does that mean that my fields are just barren no it means that you just didn't roll the right dice but what if i not if i don't get hits in combat 
that could mean a number of different things, and they're all readily explainable, but not rolling the right numbers to produce resources makes less sense, in my opinion. So just trying to help you maybe think through why you like dice rolling in some instances and not in others, it really depends on what you're doing the dice rolling for. Um, in Catan, it didn't make sense to me. Either those regions produce those resources or they don't. Now, I can understand uh, having bountiful seasons and less bountiful seasons. I can understand that. But nothing? <laughs> um, you know, that's, that's kind of harsh. So for me, I think that's why I never really liked the dice rolling pr uh, resource production mechanism. But I love dice rolling in other games because it's, it's more thematic in those other games than it, than it ever was in Catan. Um, mitigation does help. Absolutely, mitigation helps. And there isn't a whole lot of mitigation in here. Either you get the roll you need or you don't. The only mitigation is where you're putting your, your, your houses or your storehouses that are allowing you to generate those resources when those numbers are rolled. Um, that's the only real mitigation is kind of like spreading out. Um, but again, in order to spread out, you have to have the resources, and if you're not getting the resources, then you're having a hard time spreading out, and it's just like it, it snowballs into this uh, very frustrating thing. That's why I, I really didn't like, but with all of that being said, I will, never is a harsh word, but I think it, it, it's, it's a very, uh, I don't think I'll ever get rid of this. I don't think I will. Um... It helps if there is a way to mitigate the die roll. That is correct uh, when it's in a game. Um, let's see, where does that come from? Uh, mitigation helps, yes, that's correct. Uh, playing King of Tokyo the other, uh, the other day for the first time in a while, so much fun. Dice rolling is awesome in that, uh, in that because of the theme and the fast-paced nature of the game. Very correct. Um, like your answer, Bushman, yes. Uh, loved your testimony costs. Was asking what happened to Dice Steeple. Ah, 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 ah. Okay. Well, I'll let Ka I'll let Koss answer that. <laughs> uh, David Brownlee. Uh, die rolling in combat and Eclipse lessens the game for me. Uh, probably because it feels like a deep engine building game that turns to risk during combat. Um, yeah, and that's the problem with hybrid games. Um, because hybrid games, it depends on how balanced those really two different camps of gaming are concerned. A lot of people like rolling dice for the random, randomness and the thematic value of, of chance and, and uh, fate and destiny and all of that kind of stuff. But when you pair that with a very thinky, I can figure out my strategy and uh, figure out how to win on my own, when you try to marry those two things, it can really be kind of a, a dumpster fire sometimes. Uh, life happens suddenly. Uh, one of the reasons I haven't been able to do much with my channel in a while, but I'm still very much involved in the hobby and love the community. I, I can attest to all of that. Koss is a, is, is a great dude, first of all. Um, he's very much a family man, so, um, which one of the things I, uh, I, I, I admired about him the most was that he was willing to do nigh anything uh, to, to make sure that his family is well taken care of. So uh, always put the family first, and, and uh, I super admire him for that. But he is absolutely right. Life just got in the way um, with the dice steeple. And, uh, and, and so that'll be cool. Uh, dice to generate resources is fine, but the resource screw is the worst. Trading only works if the resource is available and someone is willing to trade. I never... I never liked the trade mechanism in Catan um, because often, especially if you were dealing with, if you were playing with old players and new players, new players didn't know what they were doing as far as what they were trading away and what kind of deals they were giving to this other person. So, um, you know, somebody would say, hey, I'll give you this and this if uh, you give me that, that, that. And it seemed like a, a, a good deal to them because... It gave them what they needed right now, but then it was giving the other person so much more. I just never really liked the trading mechanism. And then you would have people who were just stingy. Uh, they would not trade anything 
for any, and then that just makes the game go really, really long. So I get it. Uh, Mike Kosh, join you on your channel someday, Derek asks. Dude can send me anything and I will put it on my channel. Koss is my bro. Yes. If Koss wants to send stuff and contribute to the channel, absolutely. If he wants to do some stuff, yes, absolutely. But again, <laughs> we're at that part where um, uh, we have to find a, 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 you know, something that works for both of our schedules. I'm absolutely willing to uh, work that out. Absolutely. So, And I think, I hope Koss knows that. Um, uh, we haven't said it specifically, but I think we have a good enough relationship where I think Koss would know that I'm always open to, to working with him. Uh, let's see here. Uh, smart move, Sam. <laughs> Thanks, Derek. Maybe one day things will change where I can do more. Sam might cost, uh, da, 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 da. I do love Stone Age for dice rolling because there are wonderful mitigation options in that. We just did our, uh, JT and I just did our top, our, our bottom five and our top five lucky games. So our top 10 lucky games. And, uh, I believe Stone Age was on both of our lists. I believe I could be wrong. Um, uh, but yeah, the, the dice rolling for that resource, that's okay because you, you know that you're going to get something when you roll those dice. As long as you send the right dudes, uh, the right number of dice, uh, you know, you're going to get something, but you could roll and you could produce something for everybody else in the game but not you <laughs> and that just seems wrong it just seems wrong uh much love brother absolutely dude absolutely um so i don't mind rolling dice for resources don't get me wrong i was speaking specifically for Catan because most of the time when you're rolling for resources, I don't know, this is, that's this, I'm kind of pulling this out of my rear end because I don't, I don't have any real games that I'm thinking of right now, but it seems to me, I'll, I'll give that caveat, that um, when you roll for resource production, you're usually going to get something. But the possibility always exists where you will get nothing in Catan. I don't like that. But again, it's one of those things that I overlook because I love the geographical nature of this and I love the, the way that it is on the table. All things being even, um, while I normally pick Catan Geographies, if I'm, if I'm looking to play a game, probably not. There's a lot of other games out there that I would rather pick other than Catan. Uh, but if somebody wants to play Catan and this is an option, I will try to gravitate them towards this one because I enjoy it more. You know, if they want to play something else, fine. We'll play, we'll play whatever you want to play. But if I can get them to agree to this, that's what I would want to do. That makes sense. Is Puerto Rico going to make it into the museum? Well, I'll just put it to you this way. Um, I don't own Puerto Rico, so it's not going to be on this series. Speaking of, are folks interested in the upcoming deluxe Puerto Rico from Awakened Realms? Now, that, my friend, is a great question. Uh, I have to say, I enjoyed Puerto Rico back in the day. I never really loved it like everybody else did. Is it a classic? Totally. Absolutely. Um, am I, at the very least, interested in what Awakened Realms is doing? Yes. Absolutely. Um, I'm a huge aesthetic gamer. So if you can take a game that is a classic that has stood the test of time and pair it with deluxe components, bringing it back into the limelight, I'm very much on board for that kind of project. I think it's a great idea. And I think Awakened Realms is basically just going to be printing money. <laughs> I really do. Because when you take a, um, kind of a grail game like Puerto Rico 
and give it a new paint job, refurbished components and all this other kind of stuff, uh, people are gonna, I think, I think people are just gonna fall over each other trying to get it. Never played Puerto Rico. Yeah, we know that, Brian. Well, we don't know that yet. I haven't got to uh, um, editing that list yet, but uh, I know that. SMH. <clears throat> Neither have I, Cost says. Well, they do say two fools born a minute. I guess that makes me three. <laughs> uh, that's funny. <laughs> but, uh, Puerto Rico is a good one. Absolutely. All right. Well, <clears throat> it is a uh, raw. Yep. 25th Century just put out a new version of raw. And that is a good one as well. I got to get it to the table. I've played it twice now. I want to play it a couple more times, but that's going to be on the reviewing chopping block here in a little bit too. Um, is Zombicide Museum worthy? I'm going to have to think about that one. Um, because I don't think so. Golf clap. <laughs> uh, that's funny. All right. Well, we're going to get on out of here. It is 1130, and I am past my hour time. Hour and 10 minutes. I gave you guys an extra 10 minutes because I was 10 minutes late. There you go. Um, see, I, were, I made up for it, Bushman. Um, can I have my payback now? Uh, I do have our case, though, read through the rules during work last night. Yeah, 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 I got our keys right over there, too. Uh, so maybe we'll have to do something with that together, Brian. I don't know. We'll see. We can learn the game together. No, zombies are not mummies. <laughs> That's great. Hey, Strider, you want to come see hi? Come say hi before we go? Come here. Come here. Come on. Yes, he's there, but say hi. Hi. Yes. Oh, they'll go poppers. Oh, they'll go poppers. Yes. You can come say hi before we go. I know. I know. Let's go. All right. Well, we're out of here. Thank you for joining us. We're going to come on back later on at 2 p.m. That's going to be in about two and a half hours. Jess and I are going to play Path of Civilization uh, together. This will be the... Uh, this will be the third time that Jess has played. It will be the fourth time that I have played. Uh, but we'll have a two-player game of Path of Civilization coming up in just two and a half hours. So come back and join us. We'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care. Hey, go check out the merch. Link is in the, in the description. Uh, go check that out. That's a good way to support the channel. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. We'll take care. You take care. Why am I being so awkward right now? I'm just going to say goodbye. Goodbye. See you on the flip side. Take care.